Hello, my friend. Welcome to live chat. Oh my goodness. So this has been a tough time for indie beauty brands over the past few weeks. Uh, we've talked quite a bit about problems happening behind the scenes legally and just business-wise with indie brands and most of the time to no fault of their own. Um, and it is just a really hard time to own an indie beauty brand uh, just for a variety of factors. And I wanted to focus on that today because it has just been forefront in my content lately because it's forefront in people's lives right now. Um, and it's it's so sad because, you know, we, we had this big boom boom of indie makeup brands, I guess, you know, starting maybe in like 2017, 2018, uh, we had this big boom of, of people starting independent beauty brands. And we got so much in innovation because of that. We got so much creativity and the bigger brands started copying the smaller brands. Some brands blew up really big. Some brands never took off, but, but there were a lot of people starting indie beauty brands. And I felt like it was really great just for the cosmetic market in general. I think that it was fantastic. And it's so sad because I see that time coming to an end. I don't think that there are going to be as many indie beauty brands launching now as there were even just a year ago. So I want to talk about that today. And most importantly, I want to talk to the people that are here live in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness, the people that are here live joining us in chat, they're going to chime in their thoughts. And that's what really makes live chat so special is that it's not just me, a talking head talking at you. It is a conversation. It is a community. It is a lot of different people with a lot of different experiences and a lot of different opinions chiming in on a particular topic. And there's no place else I feel like like this. And I, I absolutely love live chat for that reason. So before we get started, I do want to introduce you to the people that are here live. If you are watching this on the replay, you are participating as well. You are also part of the collective brain by commenting down in the comment section down below. Feel free to leave your comments. Feel free to read comments, comment on other people, have a conversation in the comments. I want this to continue beyond our live time. So just very quickly, let's say hello to some of the people that popped in first. Christine, good morning to you. Nice, Gigi. Good morning to you in Minnesota. And Gigi has a question. And if you would like to participate in answering Gigi's question, please leave it in the comment section down below. Gigi has a question for the collective. If anyone can help, I'm looking for a powder blush that makes pale skin look sunburned. Any wrecks? Okay, so I am not a makeup artist, but, but where I feel like I would start if this were a problem I wanted to solve would be to look at the way my cheeks look when they're actually sunburned, looking at, you know, maybe old photos or, you know, looking in the mirror after having a run or something, you know, and looking at that color and taking a photo of that and having that and taking that photo to the store, because I feel like our, you know, our natural undertones are going to make a difference in the shade that we choose for that. And of course, also the depth of our skin. Um, Gigi, obviously in the photo, beautiful, beautiful photo photo is very fair. So the choices for Gigi are going to be different. I did pick out a couple of blushes for you, Gigi, because I saw your comment before we went live. This is a uh, one that I want you to check out. If you don't have this, these are the essence pure nude baked blushes. I've purchased these. They've been sent in PR both. Uh, these are great. Uh, this is one that I personally use for that effect. This is called rosy rosewood. Um, and this one works really well for me for that, like quote unquote sunburned effect without actual sunburn. For a more warm skin tone, um, I feel, I don't know, dude, I, I need to get a color analysis because I can't decide whether I'm warm or cool, to be honest, because I have this yellowy thing going on, but also I have this really dark hair and it's just it's, I'm, I just get confused. So anyway, for somebody with a warmer skin tone, the rare beauty blushes are actually really nice. This is purchased. This one is in the shade ha nearly apricot. And this is one that might work well for someone with a really warm skin tone, but I don't know. Uh, but the one that I use is the one from Essence. <laughs> <laughs> That's my fave. So if you have any other re recommendations for Gigi, feel free to leave those down in the comment section down below or in live chat if you're here. Ginger, hello. Good morning to you. Good morning, Miss Lavender. So good to see you. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning, Roya and Tracy. Good morning to you. Carrie, good morning. Happy Sunday. Hi, Kim. Good morning. Happy sunny, uh, Sunday from Vegas. Say hi to Vegas for me. Hi, Teresa. Teresa says, good morning from snowy and wintry North Dakota. We are under a winter storm warning until Tuesday. Girl. 
<laughs> Thank you, Teresa, for being here and to Flory for being here. I know John's popping in. John is helping me with my new audio. Hopefully you notice a difference. Uh, Jabberwocky is still here. Jabberwocky is hanging out over on the side. I can't pull Jabberwocky because the cord is too short, but I promise you Jabberwocky is sitting right next to me, my old microphone. Uh, that was its nickname with its little fuzzy top and its little googly eyes. Uh, but I, I, I needed something else for a live chat, man, because it, the live chat, if you've noticed, the sound goes in and out when, I, uh, when I'm quiet because it's trying to find the sound so that when I speak again, it kind of blows out. So we're really trying to solve that problem because it's unpleasant. It's unpleasant for me to listen to. I know it's unpleasant for some of you to listen to. So we are, we're trying something new. Uh, so John's listening in to make sure that everything sounds good and then he'll probably dip out. And Audra and Steph, uh, thank you so much for being here if you're able to make it. I appreciate you so, so much. Uh, good morning to Tish. So good to to see you. True Want says, good morning. Just finished up What's Up and Makeup. I'm ready for live chat. I'm happy you're here. My friend Daniel, hello. Good morning to you. Daniel says, good morning, Jen, Mods, and Collective Brain. Beautiful, cute, cool, sunny. It's a cool Sunday in Houston. Daniel has been in my life for a very long time since what, 2000, 2000 probably? I think 2000 was when um, I informally met Daniel. I don't think, did I meet you in person in 2000, 1999? Something like that. But Daniel was a whole child. When we were on message boards together, but I think you were an adult by the time I met you. I'm pretty sure. But but when we first interacted, I believe you were still a child. <laughs> That's how long I've known Daniel. It was in a public message board, just so you know. It was not private conversations. I don't want anybody to take that the wrong way. <laughs> Amanda, hello. So good to see you. Thank you for being here. Did your name change? I feel like your photo goes with a different name. Did your name, <laughs> is that weird? <laughs> I, I swear, I know I know your pictures. I feel like this photo goes with a different name. I could be wrong though. Are you, Amanda, you might be sitting there being like, Jen, you are just losing it. And I might be, I might be. Brie, hello, good morning. Oh, hello neighbor. Hi Brie. And I feel like your name changed too. I feel like your picture goes with a different name. What is happening? Am I losing it today? I don't know. I could be. And Dolphins Girl, hello. So good to see you. Good morning. Uh, good morning. She says, She says. good morning, Collective Brain from sunny Miami, Florida. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. All right. If I did not say good morning to you, good morning to you. Thank you so much for being here. All right. Let's see if I missed anything that I need to touch on. Okay. All right. So let's talk about indie beauty brands. All right. So this, this kind of started when we started talking about, um, indie beauty brands being sued for, um, copyright on different things, you know, or trademarks, I should say trademarks. The problem, the problem with our U S court system is that you can sue anybody for anything. And there are people that make it their job to find the things, find the weaknesses in the system and exploit them, to find the things that people will fold. They find people and companies that they assume do not have enough money to defend themselves and they go after them like vultures and they um, essentially try to take their money, whether it puts them out of business or not, doesn't matter just doesn't matter. Uh, it's all about lining their own pockets. And, you know, it's just, you know, all's fair in love and war kind of situation. Like just no sympathy, no empathy, none of that. Like they just, they don't care. Um, they just want to get money for themselves and it doesn't matter who they hurt. And it's so, so freaking sad. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if there is actual competition in the market, if they actually you know, if there's actual threat from that company, like for example, today I'm wearing very proudly on my eyes today. Thank you to Blend Bunny for sending this over to Maggie. We had a really nice uh, internet conversation. Maggie sent this over. Um, and I, I promise you, I begged her to please sell it to someone, <laughs> but she said she had some set away for friends and family. And she gave me one of those, which was so, so kind of her because these are very special. And I am saving the outer packaging for this forever. I have like, I've talked about this before. I have like a little shrine over here. Um, it's mostly dedicated to beauty influencers that I either admire or that are friends of mine or that I have met. Um, I've got all of their collabs up here. I have all, 
the collabs that I've done. Um, it's getting to be a mess because it's overcrowded and I have not reorganized it in a very long time. But um, but I put the, the outer packaging of this over there to save um, as something special, as a moment in the beauty space because of, of what happened with this palette. And if you didn't see that video, it is gonna be linked down below. Uh, but basically another brand uh, told them, uh, sent them a cease and desist and said that they owned the right to use the word grunge in cosmetics. And what really pushed this over the edge for Blend Bunny was that it was a makeup company that was located very close to them. They they are essentially not neighbors in that they live down the street, but they live very close to each other, the Blend Bunny and this other company. So they were essentially saying that there was unfair competition in the market, that they had used the word grunge before, uh, before Blend Bunny used it on this palette, and that there was unfair competition. The problem with that claim, and Blend Bunny's absolutely right, I am a hundred percent, you know, sure. I really am. I am 100% sure they would have uh, been able to fight this in court and win. Uh, but, you know, we'll get into why they didn't in a second. Uh, the big reason why is because they don't sell on the same shelves in the same stores. If for some reason, uh, I feel like I feel like the other company might might have had a little bit of a fraction of a case if they were on the shelves in the same stores in that state that would be one thing but they are not uh they are absolutely not sold in the same place uh, maggie told me they do have a retail partner locally but um but this other company is not sold there so there's no unfair competition when you're not sold in the same place on the internet does not count in my opinion <laughs> Because, you know, are you going to go after Huda Beauty now? Are you? And I can tell you for 100% sure because I saw the cease and desist that it was not Huda Beauty that went after Blend Bunny. Um, uh, Maggie's asked me not to say out loud and tell you who uh, the company was. So I'm 100% I'm going to respect that. Um, but Maggie, won Maggie definitely would have won in court because... Uh, they're really there. There's really no case for for this. There, there just isn't. There's no case for it. But the cost of hiring a lawyer, of going to court, of having them file all the paperwork. We learned that from Giselle from Glamlight. That you know, it's just it's just too much money for one freaking palette. But one thing that Maggie said is that she wants to bring this palette back under a different name. And I after using it only twice, I use it for what's in makeup that you saw this morning, and I used it today. After using it twice, I really hope that she brings back this color story. It actually, you know what this reminds me of a little bit? This reminds me of the Matrix palette from Makeup Geek, the colorful Matrix palette, because what you have here is really fun and special. So you have three different shades of each color. You have three different different depths. You have a light, you have a medium, you have a deep, and then you have a sparkly shade that kind of will go with the different um, you know, they, they kind of, it kind of goes together a little bit, but I love that she mixed up the sparkly shades on the bottom, that she didn't just make it green all the way down and pink all the way down. I love that she mixed it up. It just makes it more visually interesting. But this color story is so fun to play with. I use today, I usually talk about this in PR purchase product of the week. I guess we'll just talk about my lips and my cheeks in PR purchase product of the week. But today I use the purple row uh, and the green row. So the green row is what is in my crease and then I use the purple row on my lower lash line and I use the sparkly purple and green shades uh, on my lid. And I just had so much fun. I had so much fun with this. This is a fantastic palette and I really hope Maggie um, goes through and ends up uh, repackaging that in, with a different name. And it's just so, it's so sad. Um, this, fortunately for Maggie, I do feel like, you know, she came out of this in the best way possible, just having to discontinue one palette. Unfortunately, there are brands that are not coming out so lucky with these lawsuits and different issues that are happening with different brands. Um, it's just it's it's so sad because, you know, you see, the one thing I think that makes indie beauty special is that you see the heart behind it a lot. I mean, every once in a while you have the cash grabby ones that you'd really, you know, just like, oh, I'll start a makeup line and make a couple dollars and I'll just, you know, order some, you know, white label stuff that's already been made and pick out some shades and start a makeup line. Like even those people sometimes, you know, will have a lot of passion for makeup and they just can't afford to do it any other way. But, um, you know, sometimes I do feel like it's kind of cash grabby, you know, or it's got to be, let me just say, it's got to be, I don't know these people personally. So who am I to say that this person's cash grabby and this person is doing it for the right reasons. I don't know these people, but I would imagine that some people <laughs> out there, some people out there are doing it just to make some money and they don't really care about the makeup. 
but I feel like that's unusual for indie makeup brands. I think it's very unusual that these the people that start indie makeup brands is a lot of times because they have a passion for it. They have a passion for indie beauty and they have a passion for makeup and they want to create something really cool, really cool. And I feel like, you know, that's being stifled now. And there's going to be a lot less indie beauty brands because of it. So I've been talking for a little while. I want to take a little break and I want to see what you all are saying while, with some of these, um, with some of the things that I'm talking about. Um, yeah, Bree says with the 90s nostalgia and full swing, I'd expect brands to do a grunge theme. No one brand has the exclusive right, the right to exclusively own one word. Yes, definitely. Unless it is Dior. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like if you have a name, like, like you can't, like, Blend Bunny, Blend Bunny obviously is owned by Blend Bunny Cosmetics. But if it was just like Bunny Cosmetics, right? And somebody comes out with an Easter Bunny palette, is Blend Bunny going to sue them because they came up with an Easter Bunny palette? You know what I'm saying? Like, there has to be like a reasonable. <laughs> but the thing is, is it's not, it's not reasonable. People are just going for any old thing. And I I will tell you what I think it was with Blend Bunny. This is just my speculation. I don't know the other person that brought this lawsuit. I think it's jealousy. I 100% think it's jealousy. I think that the other person is upset that Blend Bunny is doing so well. That's my, that's my thought. You didn't hear that from me though. <laughs> that's my, that's my thought. That's just out of my own head with no one else contributing to that. I try to swallow away from the microphone. I don't know what you're hearing as far as my swallows. I need to get used to the sensitivity of this thing. <laughs> so I apologize if I've been gulping in your ear. I will try to move back a little bit. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Honey says it should be named Well Laid Plans. I've seen so many different suggestions for what this should be named of. Named uh, One person said it should be named Sugar and Spite instead of Sugar and Spice. Be Sugar and Spite. <laughs> one of the shades could be F you. <laughs> you know, like I think that would be pretty funny. You know, just rename the shades. But I think there should be another like grunge palette, like another 90s themed palette. I think that's a great idea, but just name it something else. So, yeah. Uh, Format Finaz says, our court systems are completely broken. Is power and money, power always and always wins. Whether the state or private sector, we need reform. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like in this particular case that Blend Bunny should have been able to go to court and fight and win, and then have the other company then reimburse them for lawyer's fees because it's a waste of time. I, I think that the there should be a, a clause in the, in the legal system always, doesn't matter the realm of suits. If the court, if the judge feels that it was a frivolous lawsuit and that the person who brought it and the lawyer who brought it because the lawyer should know better. If the lawyer should, if the if the lawyer should have known better, then the other person's fees should be reimbursed by that person, hundred percent. Because that's the lawyer's job is to know what's frivolous and what's actually a real, you know, something you should sue over. And this is clearly a frivolous lawsuit. So, and if you've got a lot of money to hire a lawyer, you can, you know, go in and 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 you can do these kinds of things. Because if you win, then you know. I mean, I think in this case, I don't see the benefit in this particular case for the other company. I see no benefit for them. I think it was just done out of spite. I think that it was done out of jealousy and that I use that word grunge. So you can't use that word grunge. Um, and you're doing fantastic. And I, I am not happy with you doing fantastic. We'll leave it at that. I think that's where it came from because I don't see any other benefit because what what monetarily was this person going to get back from this? I don't know because I don't think that they are going to get um, any more customers because of it. I don't think that Blend Bunny was taking customers from them because of this palette. The only benefit I see is just to stick it to a company that you're jealous of. And if you've got a lot of money to fight battles, to shut down people that you're jealous of, you know. I don't see a, I don't see a monetary reward for that person. Some of the other ones I see a monetary reward, but not this one. 
Oh, okay. It was Doodles by the Bunny. Okay. That's why I saw it. Okay. Doodles by the Bunny. If you're not following her on Instagram, she makes mock-up palettes, but now she's actually working for companies and designing palettes for them. Um, she works for Gourmand Girls right now. And um, Doodles by the Bunny created the Sugar and Spite palette, which I love. I absolutely love. Go over there and check it out. It's it's very cute. Um, and follow Doodles by the Bunny. She does She does great work over there. That's where I saw that. Thank you so much for clarifying that because I want her to get credit for that. All right, let me go ahead and scroll down a little bit. Is that what it's called, a nuance lawsuit? That makes sense because, like, it's the little nuances. That makes sense. Carrie says, ethics laws that apply to lawyers prohibit frivolous lawsuits, but it is hard and painful to enforce. Gotcha. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. Julie says California actually has a law. I think it's called a slap suit. I heard Emily D. Baker talk about it. And you know what? People were talking about that. A lot of I, Emily's videos are so long. <laughs> I have, and a lot of the topics she talks about, I, I don't really know a lot about, but I really should just go over there and learn from her about some of this legal stuff, you know, and just kind of get to know uh, some of the legal terms. Cause I'm not a lawyer. I'm just learning on the fly, man. I'm just, I'm just got my informal, de informal degree, informal, my informal degree in Googling, man. That's all I got. <laughs> So I really should go over and learn more from Emily because I have heard uh, other people in my comment section talk about slap suits. But I but like you said, I don't think it's it applies everywhere. It might I don't know if it's just a California thing or if it's just specific kinds of courts. Um yeah. So yes, exactly. True want says fees and time, it also affects your creative headspace. Oh, 100%. 100%. So, so that's one issue that indie brands are coming across is, you know, trademark lawsuits and things like that, frivolous lawsuits like that. But we also have Suva Beauty that we talked about in uh, What's Up in Makeup today that I just wanted to touch on in that, you know, Suva Beauty, and I know people are saying, you know, oh, I haven't heard of Suva Beauty in a long time. You know, that's why they're, they're not doing well is because I haven't heard of them in a long, long time. Marin Makeup, okay, is a makeup artist's brand that a lot of makeup artists use, especially special effects makeup artists, but all kinds of makeup artists use. But people, you know, might say, oh, I haven't heard of Marin Makeup in a long time. I'm surprised they're still in business. Our, our circle of makeup that we use and use regularly is one thing, but there's other circles of makeup users. And I really do believe that Suva Beauty really sold a lot of product to makeup artists and to, you know, graphic artists, people that were trying, were, we're using those hydro liners for something special, not just everyday use. And there are a lot of people that were using them for everyday use and still use them for everyday use, of course. But I think that the market wasn't necessarily the everyday makeup wearer, which is what this community typically is. Um, there's, of course, there's people from all different, you know, industries that, that watch this channel. But I think primarily we're all just everyday makeup wearers. Uh, so we may not see Suva Beauty as much, but that doesn't mean that it's not popular in other circles. So I just wanted to address that really quick because I kind of felt bad when I saw people say, well, I haven't heard them of them in a long time and that's probably why they're not doing well. Um, it's really what happened and I'm just putting two and two together here uh, that Forma, when they declared bankruptcy, um, still owed and we know this from the, this is something I know for a fact. I'll tell you what's fact and what's opinion. So what's fact is that Suva Beauty put in a claim for about $400,000 for, um, for money that was owed to them from selling in Morphe stores. When the Morphe stores abruptly closed, they lost their biggest retail partner. And so they weren't able to sell through through Morphe stores anymore. And also they still owed them hundreds of thousands of dollars. So not only getting that retail hit of not being able to sell there anymore, but also not, you know, being out that $400,000, which is, um, you know, it's, it's, that's a lot of money, even for a bigger indie brand, that's a lot of money. Uh, so the owner put up stuff and said, you know, that they're closing down. And it's, that just goes to show that an indie brand, even when you quote unquote make it, when you have your own huge warehouse with the name Suva on it, and you've got all these employees and you got a big manufacturing facility, you know, not manufacturing, a big packaging facility and storage facility for all of these orders that are going out. Even then, even when you get to that point, you're not safe. 
because something can can com- one thing can happen that can completely wreck your brand. Um, I do feel like larger brands are more insulated from this because they have these huge parent companies and parent companies can move money around. Parent companies uh, can take money from one brand and move it over to another, you know, and you can, you have more cushion when there's a big parent company company or big investors that have deep pockets, there's more cushion to save a brand that co- goes into this kind of situation. Um, of course, not all big brands are going to make it. Uh, there's rumors that Cover Effects is going out. They're having a huge sale right now, which um, it's 50% off. I believe Cover Effects is an Estee Lauder brand. Let me see. Sorry for the, if you don't like the ASMR sound. <laughs> I just want to check. Uh, what? It says AS Beauty is the parent company. What is AS Beauty? What? I thought that they were, uh, um, I thought they were an Estee Lauder brand. Oop. Sorry. AS Beauty. Oh, okay. Let me see what brands they own. AS Beauty. Okay, so they own, oh, this makes sense. (gasps) This makes sense. Okay, so AS Beauty owns Cover Effects, Julep Beauty, and Mally Beauty. They also own Bliss and Laura Geller. Laura Geller, I feel like, is having a renaissance right now. They are coming back and they are coming back strong. They've found their audience. They're doing, they seem to be doing very well. Bliss, I feel like, has their core audience. Um, that's like a body care line. But Julep and Mally, I'm surprised they still exist, to be honest. I'm surprised if if Julep and Mally don't go out before cover effects, I would be shocked. <laughs> I would be shocked if Julep and Mally last longer than cover effects. I like cover effects stuff, but I, I will tell you, I will admit, I haven't bought any of their stuff in years. Um, so, so yeah, um, but it looks like cover effects, uh, people are rumored that cover effects is going out, but I thought they were an essay water brand, but we can take like Becca, for example, as a, um, an example of a bigger brand that, that went out because they just couldn't, um, they couldn't show enough profit because what happens when you're underneath a big parent company is that you're being compared to the other brands that are under that parent company. And if you are the by far the least profitable of those brands, you're going, you're going to be gone. That's just the way that it is. I mean, we're seeing it right now with former brands. We're seeing, you know, Lipstick Queen never came back, which I'm hoping that one day they revive Lipstick Queen because I really do think Lipstick Queen could be big again. I genuinely do. And I don't know why they're not investing in Lipstick Queen. They really need to bring that brand back. I think it could crush. Like, honestly, I think it absolutely could crush if they brought it back. Uh, so I think that's a really stupid move on their part. Just just my opinion. But we saw Jaclyn Cosmetics go out. We saw Morphe 2 on its way out. Um, Morphe 2 does not seem to be doing well at all. The only brand under former brands that seems to be really doing well is the one well, maybe not even really doing well, but seems to be pushing to do well. It seemed there, I feel like they're putting all their eggs in the Morphe basket, uh, former brands. And I don't know if that's the best choice. If I were Forma, um, I would restart Lipstick Queen and I would put half the Morphe marketing budget into Lipstick Queen. Uh, Morphe, I feel like, is like the Regina George of the makeup community, you know? <laughs> they used to be they used to be so popular, um, popular, you're going to be popular, um, <laughs> but they're, they're, they used to be. But then everybody found out that they were the mean girl, you know? And now they're getting hit by a bus. I think that that's, you know, hopefully my reference is right. It's been a minute since I've seen that movie. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just, I feel like they're just going the wrong direction, just trying to keep Morphe alive. I think that they should try to keep it alive, but I really wish that they would, they would invest in Lipstick Queen. All right, let's go back to the comments. Hi, Sandra. Sandra says, Julep products are decent quality. They absolutely are, but not marketed very well. Absolutely agree. Last time I bought Julep was on QVC UK years ago. Okay, this is this is what happened with Julep. Julep should have stuck to nail polish. I, I still have, and probably half of them are dried up, 
a huge julep nail polish collection from the julep subscription. So many julep nail polish. They were like half size nail polishes. All right. You got like half the product and they were like twice the price. It was like $10. Well, not, I guess that's not twice the price, but they were like $10 for like a half size nail polish. But what Julep had going for it for nail polish was the colors that they developed, all the shades. They had such unique shades and such a range and they would discontinue this shade and then they would bring back the shade. And that just made people go nuts because it was like, I need to get it now before they discontinue it. And they made some of the coolest freaking shades ever. I still have so many of them, but now like, I feel like like more natural, like nails, like, you know, are, are more popular right now. Like, you know, super sparkly, you know, nails aren't as popular, but, um, but man, I love those julep polishes. They were so good. They were so good. But then they tried to branch into makeup and skincare and it just kind of fell flat. Um, their makeup formulas were just okay. Um, some of them were better than others. Uh, their skincare was just kind of okay. They just made some really odd choices and I wish that they had just stuck to makeup. I mean, stuck them nail polish because they were freaking crushing it, crushing it. All right, let's take a little break and let's um, talk about what's on my face today. We already talked about Blend Bunny Sugar and Grunge Palette is on my eyes, having so much fun with that. And then also, uh, so that was set in PR, also sent in PR, uh, I believe, Fresh Kiss on my lips today. Fresh Kiss Lip Cram by ColourPop. And this is the shade I Heart That is what is on my lips today. And then on my cheeks today, I know this is PR. Uh, this is Too Faced Cloud Crush in the, uh, in the shade Velvet Crush is my blush today. And I'm very much enjoying uh, all of these products, actually. I do feel like the lip cremes are a little bit drier than I like, but they're nice. And the, that makes them a little longer lasting, which is good. I also wanted to just, uh, and I show this to you tomorrow in the product report, I'll show these to you, but uh, I also got this, uh, which I'm very excited about. Thank you to Blend Bunny for sending this over. This is the Bare Cheeks Face Palette, and this one is still available. This actually really reminds me now, looking at it on camera, of a Sigma blush palette that I have. Let me get that real quick. I have it right here. I still use it all the time. I've had it forever. I guess it's different. But it kind of reminds me of this a little bit. <laughs> this is the Sigma. Uh, it's just called the Cheek Palette. Uh, and that, that just kind of reminded me of it. But uh, but yeah, I used this yesterday and very much enjoyed it for the first time. They also sent over a highlighter palette. It's called uh, Noctilucent. I love that. Noctilucent. Here we go. Highlighter palette. And it's basically just like shifty shifty so here on the back you get kind of a better idea of what those colors look like but uh but yeah very much enjoying the blend bunny stuff so far and yeah you don't have to use this just as a highlighter palette you can use it also on your eyes if you want to uh no rules man no rules i just saw that leah gifted five memberships thank you so much leah for doing that i really appreciate you uh if you were gifted five members if you were gifted one of those memberships and if you have a membership um it's a dollar 99 a month uh it's just basically a tip jar uh, I don't have super chats turned on because they make me uncomfortable. <laughs> um, they, live getting, getting like people giving me money live makes me like feel super weird. So I turned that off and instead I have the $1.99 a month membership. If you'd like to support the channel, it really does add up. Uh, so thank you to those of you that are doing that. And those of you that are, um, are, giving the gifts of the membership. So what you get for that is uh, I'm trying to give you the Friday video early whenever possible. You get it a day early. And then also we do occasional live streams uh, just for the community. So those will be available to you. If you become a member, you get access to the old live streams. And they're usually about an hour long and we just sit and we chat. They're very relaxed. So thank you. Those of you that are part of the Collector Brain Elite, I appreciate you. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and jump back into this. Okay, so Shad uh, Shabadoo, I love that. I feel like indie brands can be very hit and miss for me. Oh, me too. Oh, absolutely. I remember when I, uh, back in probably 2018, I ordered, I wanted to do a video promoting Etsy brands, you know, makeup Etsy brands. And I bought from like six brands. I think I spent like, I don't know, $150 on products. Uh, and I didn't like most of it. And I felt really uncomfortable going on camera and telling you how much I didn't like these very, very small indie brands. So I just let it go. Um, I think I ended up mentioning a couple of them just here and there, the, the products that I did like, but I liked very little of it. Um, you know, I, the barrier of entry, 
can be so low. Um, at least it used to be the barrier of entry because, you know, Etsy is kind of wild, wild west over there with a lot of things, you know, people don't follow regulations. And I know this from the food space, people sell marshmallows over there on Etsy. They're not supposed to, unless you live in a state where that's legal to do so. Most states you cannot sell out of state unless you are in a commercial kitchen. And I, looking at them, most of these are not made in a commercial kitchen. People are just breaking the rules and hoping they don't get caught because there's really no consequence for, um, you know, well, unless you get, you could get sued if you get very sick. Um, but I mean, I'm assuming most people are not doing anything to get people very sick, but, um, you know, I'm kind of going in circles here a little bit, but my point is, is that you can make cosmetics at your house and in, you know, whatever environment you have and sell them on Etsy. And, you know, I think that's why some of the, the smallest indie brands just aren't great qualities because they're not being made by people who were trained to make cosmetics. And also you, you have to have certain agents in there. So like when I look at the back of one of these palettes, so for example, like this blend bunny palette, uh, it says, uh, you know, there's all kinds of things in here. I can't, I'm not even going to pronounce them because they're all mushed together and it's really small print and my eyes are getting to be 45 years old, 40, almost 46 years old. So I can't um, read them, but, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? There's all these ingredients that go into these products that you can't just go to the store and buy. You have to order them. And not only you have to order them, you have to order a certain quality of them. And then you have to put them in the right concentration. And being a cosmetic chemist is hard. It's not something that you can just, you know, figure out in your kitchen. Uh, you can try and you can do your best. Uh, there are certain things that, that are easier to make. Things like lip balms are a little easier to make, but still, you know, you got to get your preservative system right. You have to get some antioxidants in there so that they don't, the oils don't go rancid. Um, you know, it's, it's a delicate thing. And I think, you know, people see other people doing it and then they jump in and they, they just assume they can figure out how to do it. And it's hard not to say they can't figure it out, but it's hard. It's not, it's not an easy thing to do. So uh, I think that's why some of the very smallest indie brands uh, are sometimes not good is because they're kind of just playing with it and they're not, they're not a professional in that area. Like I could never, I can make marshmallows, but I can't make makeup. <laughs> I actually flirted with the idea of making my own lip balms at one point, uh, but then I, I did not do that because I wanted to make honey-based lip balms and beeswax-based lip balms because I love them so much, but I did not do that. Uh, just very quickly, there's Leah's post. I just wanted to highlight that. And we also have somebody that just gifted 10 memberships. Let me find you. Kim, thank you so much. That is so kind of you. Thank you so, so much. And I feel like gifting memberships is such a great way to support the channel and also give something to somebody else so they can see what it's like to be a member and decide whether they want to do it. And if they don't ever want to be a member, they still get to do it for, you know, however long that lasts. I don't know how long a gifted membership lasts. I imagine it's like a month or something. I don't know. I'm not sure. YouTube doesn't tell us a whole lot. Um, oh, it looks like it looks like Amanda got one. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, yeah. And ten Tenderella truthfully just got one. Tiffany just got one, I think. Oh, I think Tiffany's been a member though. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for doing that. That's so kind of you. Uh, so yeah, the, like the pink sauce lady. Exactly. Where did the pink sauce lady comment go? Exactly, Amanda, the pink sauce lady. Oh, hi, Audra. Hi, my friend. Audra says, or worse, they buy white label palettes and sell them as homemade. Yes. Oh, that's terrible. At a hell of a markup. Nothing wrong with white label, but be honest. I agree with you. Thank you, Audra, for bringing that into the conversation because people do do that. People will um, buy things that are just off of a shelf because you can go on some of these, especially the Chinese uh, market. They have, they, they make a lot of money off of these white label products and it's not bad. Like people assume just because it comes from China that it's bad or something like that as far as the quality goes. Um, you know, you can get some very high quality products that are made in China, but to, to say that you made it yourself and it's got, you know, at the hexyl palmitate and, you know, all the different <laughs> all the different things that, that are in, you know, eyeshadow to, to make it in that conversation and press them, you're, you can tell things are machine pressed. Like these are machine pressed. There's no way a human pressed these. You used to be able, like I have some old palettes somewhere. You can tell those things are freaking hand pressed. Like you can, you can tell because one way you can tell is it doesn't, um, like in the pan, like, so for example, with this, 
you can see in the pan that it fills up, it doesn't fill up the packaging 100%, but it fills up the packaging, uh, the, the pan all the way. But when it's hand pressed, there's a little divot in the pan where you can see where it's pressed. And you can also see when it's homemade, when someone's doing pressing it themselves, because you can buy kits, when someone's pressing it themselves, you can sometimes see imperfections in that it's not pressed as evenly. Um, but these are definitely machine pressed and she does not claim to make them herself. So. But but it's a lot more expensive. It's so much more expensive to have a lab formulate colors for you that are just for you rather than picking them out. You can still design a palette and make a really cool palette um, with shades that already exist and then, you know, pay a designer or design your own packaging, all of that. Like you can do all of that, but don't say that you hand press them yourself when you bought them from um, from a lab and don't say that you design the colors just say I designed this palette because that's true but don't say you you know you hand you crafted the colors when they were just picked off of a picked out of a you know something already made just be honest about it I don't think people care honestly like I feel like a lot of people lie about the dumbest freaking things they lie about the dumbest things like people don't care like just don't just don't talk about it you know, if you picked colors off of a, sh off of a, uh, in a, you know, online and you pick colors and put together a palette, just say, I designed this palette with the idea of, don't say I had the lab formulate these colors specifically for me, blah, blah. Don't, nobody freaking cares. <laughs> Unless that's true, right? Unless that's true. I mean, AA marshmallow flavored lip balms. I'm all about it. I'm not making them though. I, I think my days of making, thinking about making cosmetics are done, especially with all this BS going on in the industry right now. You know, the, I think we're going to like going back to the topic. I think we are at the end of just willy nilly people making makeup brands because it's too much risk. There's too much risk, you know, because someone can literally come in, send you a letter and your brand is over. It's just, it's not a safe market to go into. It's just not. It's just not. So, I mean, I think some some aspects of, of makeup, excuse me, I think some aspects are safer than others. I think if you're making beauty tools, I think that's safer overall, um, just for the product itself, because, you know, worst case is the product falls apart. Um, you know, I think that's like the worst thing that can happen. You give some refunds. Uh, people, of course, can come after your, um, you know, your your name, your brand name. But as far as like people coming after your colors, you know, the saying that they were hurt by the product or, um, you know, different things that can happen with with actual cosmetics, you know, skincare formulation. So, I mean, it, it, it it's just it's so sad because there was so much innovation. And I just see that stopping because people are just too scared to start their own companies at this point. That's that's what I see happening. And I think we're going to have less innovation because of it. I don't think that it's good for the industry as a whole, you know, and seeing things happening to other people is a deterrent for people to start their own brands. Yeah. So Audra is saying uh, made in America is a very misleading term. Yeah. So so when you look at a product, it has to have where it's made on it. Um, so like this one says this says made in China. See, there you go. See, these products are made in China. Yeah. Made in China. But some of them, where's a Too Faced palette here? Italian spritz. Let me see where this one was made. So this says on it. Made in Italy. OK, because this is the good formula. There's two formulas of Too Faced palettes. There's the Made in Italy ones, which are the good formula. And then there are the not Made in Italy ones. I have another Too Faced palette lying around. Let me see. Where's a crappy one? Hold on. I'll find one. I know I have one here. Okay. This is... <laughs> This is all dusty because this sits on my, because it was, there wasn't, I needed to fill space when I first started my little shrine over there. So I put these old Too Faced holiday palettes over here. Aren't these things cute? But these are the crappy ones. So this one says, oh, this one just straight up says made in China. But some of them say made, 
uh, made packaged in the Dominican Republic. It's like made in the USA package. That's what it is. Made in the USA packaged in the Dominican Republic. And there are rumors out there that made in the USA packaged in the Dominican Republic is oxygen development, which is the people that made um, the hairy lipsticks, uh, Jacqueline's hairy lipsticks, that if you see that, that that is a sign that it is. I don't know that for sure, but people in the industry told me that, that that's what that means because there's no other lab that does that made in the USA and packaged in the Dominican Republic that oxygen is the only one that does that. But I don't know that from my own, you know, this is so dusty. This thing's been sitting up there for so freaking long. This one's just straight made in China, but this is not, there's a reason why these are sitting on display and were never used because <laughs> they're terrible. Um, so my point is, is, is that just because it says it's made in the USA doesn't mean that it's good quality. Uh, you know, it does, it just doesn't automatically mean that. It's, it's sad because you would hope, but it's not true. It's not true. All right. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another factor, Molly. Molly says, I have to be careful with makeup I get because my skin is so sensitive. Yeah. And it's, and have you been able to identify Molly, what the ingredients are that you're sensitive to? Because this is another thing we were talking about is, um, this is kind of off topic from what's been makeup today. We were talking about, uh, the Sephora clean at Sephora lawsuit and how the person said that that sued Sephora. Um, cause if you haven't watched what's been makeup yet today, the person who sued Sephora in the class action lawsuit against the clean at Sephora label. They had an idea in their head of what uh, clean at Sephora meant, but it's clean at Sephora. They specifically lay out what it means. And it wasn't what this woman had in her mind of what it meant. And one of the things was that it wouldn't, basically it wouldn't cause people any harm um, and that people wouldn't be allergic to it, that it wouldn't have, you know, people wouldn't have reactions to the ingredients for things for clean at Sephora. But then you have people like Molly. It's like, what's Molly sensitive to? We don't know. At least I don't know at this point. Molly might know. But there's, you know, all kinds of common allergens. There's macadamia nut seed, seed macadamia seed oil and stuff. People, you know, that's a common allergen. You know, there's gluten in some products. And people, some people with gluten allergies cannot even put gluten on their skin. It's not just about eating it. It's about putting it on their skin. So, like, you, we wouldn't have any products left. We just legit would not have any products left. Okay. Molly says they're not sure. that She's not sure yet. Okay. Well, keep me posted if you figure it out, because I'm curious. I remember I had this big conversation with uh, Nady from Poplux when I went, met Nady once. Um, actually, I think I, I yelled at him in his comment section first, but then when I met him, I yelled at him again that I think I thought that Nady was uh, sensitive to bismuth oxychloride, which is a um, a pigment that is used in a lot of eyeshadows. But the thing about the pigment is that it's the when it's ground down, when it's so small, it's got these little sharp edges. It, like if you look at it under a microscope, it's just sharp. It's it's not a smooth, um, you know, it's not a smooth little ball. It's got these little sharp edges. So some people, because of that, when you rub it on your eye, it gives it basically scratches your eye, you know, for people that are really sensitive. And it seemed like when I was, you know, um, when I was bugging him about it, that the palettes he was having issues with that he was sensitive to were all ones with bismuth oxychloride. Um, I don't know if he actually took me seriously or not, but it's like, stop using palettes with bismuth oxychloride unless you want to have a reaction. I'm telling you, I'm diagnosing you right now. <laughs> but that, what all this to say is you don't know what's going to cause an allergic reaction. And that's another thing with indie beauty brands is you could get sued for an allergic reaction. You know, and people could say, you know, you caused me harm when it was something that's a common ingredient in many many makeup products. You know, you never know. It's just, it's so, it's so sad because I really do feel like indie beauty really brought us to another, um, another level, another level. And it's just, I, I want to see it thrive. I want to see small businesses thrive. I want to see people following their dreams and building things that they're proud of. But I feel like our, at least in the U S we just get squashed by big businesses. Um, you know, people with deep pockets, as Giselle said, you know, and, and it's just, it's just very sad that there isn't more support for people that are trying to grow businesses and trying to do it the right way. Um, it just, it just makes me really sad. So it seems like Julie's heading out. Bye Julie. Oh, Nady still posts. Nady still posts. He's still, he's still on YouTube. He's still posting. Go check him out. Pop Lux. 
P-O-P-L-U-X-E. Um, I'm sad though that that he he was going to release an eyeshadow palette. And he, he was talking about it recently that, um, that it's still in the works. I actually was helping him with the color story of it years ago. I want to say it was like 2022. I was helping him. He asked me my opinion on the color story, which is an odd thing to ask me of all people. But I was so honored that he asked me, you know, to to give my feedback on the color story. So yeah. That was really fun. I was really excited for that to come out, and it just didn't come out because he had his own indie brand um, called Poplux, and his highlighters were fabulous. I really enjoyed those. He had one that turned from black to white on the skin, so it, it was black in the pan, and it was white when you applied it, and it was really beautiful. Um, I had another one that was a peach that he made, just really beautiful. I wish that he would just come out with more highlighters. You know, but it's expensive. It's so expensive. It's so expensive. And when you put your whole savings into your company and then to have something like that happen, it's just, it's so, it's so sad. I mean, like JD Glow right now, I feel so freaking bad for them. I genuinely do. I mean, it's just, it's not fair and it's not right. And I, you know, I, I'm just, I'm so sad for them because what's happening with them, if you didn't watch the show yet today, is that, um, they are uh, they they were given a notice for California's Prop 65, which you have to have if you're using titanium dioxide in a loose powder product. You have to put a Prop 65 warning on your products if you're going to sell in California. I go into more details about what the heck that means and all that in the show today. I like explain everything, but. Um, but yeah, but they're supposed to be exempt if you're under 10 employees. You're supposed to be exempt, which makes absolutely no freaking sense when it comes to the law. Like you should have, do you need a warning or not? You know, if you need a warning because something is legit dangerous, it should be a warning regardless of the size of the company. Like that makes absolutely no freaking sense to me, but that's written into Prop 65. It doesn't make any sense. But anyway, um, so to, um, which call it, JD Glow was targeted by bounty hunters essentially um and it looks like they are rebranding i'm still working on trying to understand what happened there uh and i will definitely update you if i find out anything about what happened with jd glow um and why you know the questions that i had in the show today uh, but i'm assuming that there are very good answers to the questions i had in the show today but i'm i i don't know the answers to those questions they're just current questions that i have but it's just so freaking sad it's so messed up because jd glow has been around for a bit. Uh, I don't know when they open, but I do have some single JD Glow shadows that I purchased and I love ever, all of them. I have a silver from JD Glow that is like the best silver I have ever used. It's so good. Uh, and I know a lot of you all love JD Glow as well. And it just, it makes me so freaking sad that they have to go through this. It's, it's awful. Oh, so Bree says, speaking of JD Glow, a certain subreddit that won't be named, thanks, because <laughs> they absolutely hate me. <laughs> it's so weird. It's such the 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 hate boner they have for me. Excuse my language is just odd. <laughs> It's very weird. But anyway, uh, subreddit that won't be named, thank you, is implying that they are using this lawsuit for sympathy because they're anti-choice. Not sure what to say about that. I think that that's that's a freaking weird take, and that's why the the they're. I think that's a weird take. I I this is what I think. I am of course not anti-choice. Um, you know, I I of course I'm very very left leaning. If you do not know this about me, I'm extremely left leaning. Um, you know, but I also believe 100% in freedom. Uh, I believe that people have a right to believe what they choose to believe and have their own belief systems. So if people at JD Glow are anti-choice, then that is their right. And when we start taking away people's rights to have certain beliefs, we're in a, we're not in a democracy anymore. And that's not okay with me. So um, I believe if that's true, that JD Glow has an anti-choice belief, I believe that that is 100% their right. And I think that it should be up to the individual consumer, whether they then want to support the brand or not, um, because that is also freedom. It's freedom of choice. And if, and I don't, I, I well, first of all, it can't be using a lawsuit for sympathy the lawsuit exists. I've seen the filings. It's in What's Up and Makeup, the actual lawsuit filing. So it's not like she's making it up. She can't possibly be making it up. That's not possible because you can go on the, the website for Prop 65 
the stuff is there. Um, I blocked out private information though. So I'm hoping that, you know, what's private stays private for her. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, there's no way that it's fake. I'll tell you that for a hundred percent it is not fake. And to say that she's using it for sympathy, that's just mean. That's just mean. Like somebody has to like get rid of their whole brand name and everything they've built. And you're going to say people are mean. I don't like mean people. That's just mean. That's why I have to say about that, Brie. But to be clear, I am extremely left-leaning on 99%, well, 100% of things. <laughs> so any, if you think of something as a left thing, that's typically where I'm at. Um, I'm not going to say everything because I'm not thinking of every single little thing in my brain, but I, I am pro-choice. Let me just say that straight up. I am pro-choice, but I believe in her right to be anti-choice if that's real. That's where I stand on it. And I think it's messed up for somebody to say that she's using it for sympathy. I think that's, that's, that's up. So that is my strong stance on that. I will, I will back JD Glow and their right to have their own beliefs. We don't all have to agree with each other, but we should all agree that everybody has a right. hate eggplants. <laughs> I mean, you know, people have, you know what? I believe in that subreddit's right to hate me. It is totally their right. They can hate me all they want. I am not going to shut up. I'm going to keep doing what I want to do and they can do whatever the hell they want to do in their little corner. Just don't come to my, don't, don't come to my space. Go over there in your space and do your own damn thing. That is totally fine. Go do, go, go hate over there. I will not be a part of that. <laughs> Just don't come over to my space. It gives them a place to vent. You know, mean people need a place too. Let them be over there. Not say everybody over there is mean because I'm sure there's nice people over there too. Positive. There's nice people over there too. But yeah, I, you know, what I've been involved in recently is um, the Royal Caribbean subreddit because I'm going on a cruise with my mom in May and I've been really enjoying it over there. But even some of those people are mean. Like, <laughs> They have no patience. They have zero tolerance for buffoonery over there in the Royal Caribbean subreddit. <laughs> so I've really been enjoying that little community, but I don't I don't participate in makeup reddits. I used to try, but no, not anymore. <laughs> uh, it's not it's not my place. It's not my space. Absolutely not. But uh, but Royal Caribbean, fair game. Fair game. <laughs> I agree, Pam, that J.D. Glow shimmers are something special. I agree. All right, let me scroll down. You know, I think people, Cynthia, can hate me because I am not perfect. And I've done some dumb stuff. And I've said some dumb stuff. And, you know, I'm again, it, not, you could be the juiciest peach, the juiciest peach, and someone will not like peaches. Is that how that goes? <laughs> And when I used to frequent over there, one thing I noticed is they would lift people up. I'm like, yeah, 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 for this person, this person's awesome, this person's awesome. And then once they hit like a certain subscriber amount, it's like, I can't believe that person did this. And they would just automatically hate them. It was so weird. It's weird behavior. It's weird behavior. And it's not everybody. It's just the loud voices. Subreddits absolutely can be mean. So you have to pick and choose what you want to participate in, you know? But yeah, I mean, when you're anonymous on the internet, what? bad could happen. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I totally, I, I, I if, if somebody is watching this and there's going to be a thread about me over there, hi, um, have fun, enjoy, like you have a hundred percent right to post whatever you want. Uh, you know, I will not be reading it. I will not be over there. I won't even know that it exists, but if you want to go have fun and make fun of the way that I talk and the way that I do my makeup, feel free. At least that was the last topic that I read over there. <laughs> years ago. Are they still talking about how I can't do makeup and how I say certain words funny? I forget what the, what are the words they pick on me? If your biggest issue with me is that I say words funny, like I'm okay with that. Like that's cool, man. I'll take it. I'll absolutely take it. Go have fun. Enjoy. Hate all you want. It's your space, not my space. Who am I to tell you what to do in your space? <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, that's so funny. Lori says, glad I have the right to hate cruises. Yes, uh, feel free. Feel free to hate cruises. I, I've been on two cruises. I went on one. It was uh, the week between, it was a three-day cruise between Christmas and New Year's with my husband's family one year. And that kind of gave me a little bit of a bug. And then my mom and I, two years ago, went on a cruise to New England together. And we had a freaking blast, my mom and I. We had so much fun. And I, like my mom and I, we used to spend a lot of time together when I was a teenager. Uh, we had like a, a thing that we used to do together. It was like a group that we participated in together. And there was like a mom's side. And then there was a kid's side. I was in like the teenager group. Um, and my mom, you know, would socialize with moms. And I would socialize mostly with the kids because I didn't necessarily get along with the teenagers super well, to be honest. Um, but yeah, but my mom and I, we used to spend a lot of time together. And then I went away to college and, you know, we didn't really spend as much time together anymore. So it was wonderful, like spending time with her and just exploring New England together. It was wonderful. So uh, so I'm taking my mom on a Caribbean cruise in May, uh, but we're going on a bigger ship. The ship we went on for for the first one was one of their smaller ships. It's called Enchantment of the Seas. But this time we're going on Symphony of the Seas, which is a huge, massive ship with like live plants and what they call a central park and, you know, so many restaurants and all that. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really excited to go. So I, I like cruises. I have fun. I think it just depends on, you know, which cruise line you go on to and whether it fits your own vibe. You know, I think everybody has what they're looking for in a cruise. And I think picking the one that's right for you is really, really, really important. Because I've heard horror stories about some of them. That they're absolutely freaking terrible. But Royal Caribbean's done me well so far. So <laughs> I'm sticking with them for now. But anyway, all right. I am going to pop off here. Yeah. Okay. Mel, let's touch on this real quick. Mel says, I feel like everyone should have the right to believe what they want. However, I do not think those beliefs should be imposed on everyone. Yes. I.e. banning books, anti-LGBTQ laws, anti-choice laws. Absolutely. And I think that's where it, it crosses over. When you're thinking something in your own head, I believe you have a right to that belief. But when that belief affects other people, when you are doing things that are hurting somebody, that crosses a line for me. It's the action that crosses the line, not the belief if that makes sense. Um, if you you have actions that hurt people, I have an issue with that. So yeah, I just want to make sure that that's very, very clear. I'm not giving a pass to people that have hateful, hurtful beliefs. I'm just saying they have a right to those because I want people, I want to live in a democracy where people have rights. I may not like it. I may think that they're awful people, but that's also my right. They have their right to think that I'm an awful person. And I love that for us, that we have a right to have our own beliefs. And nobody's perfect. Very true, Patricia. Nobody's perfect. Yeah. Yep, yeah, it's true. I'm not perfect. Never claim to be. I'm happy not being perfect because I like learning. If I was perfect, what would I have to learn? Life would be boring. <laughs> you know? All right. I'm going to go ahead and pop off here. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, just a reminder, if you haven't seen the ends of the shows recently, uh, next week, is Easter Sunday. So we will not have live chat. I'm spending Easter Sunday with my family. Uh, and then the week after that, uh, right after Easter Sunday, on that Monday, I'm flying out to New Orleans for an event called Creators and Friends. And you are going to see this all over your feeds, especially if you are in the same circles as me. If you follow the same people that I do, you're going to see Creators and Friends freaking everywhere starting that week. Uh, because there's about 30 of us going to New Orleans and we're going to be posting a lot. Um, I'm hoping to do a live stream from there. That's kind of my goal. That's what I would love to do is a live stream from there. But we will see what happens. Um, but it's just going to be random. I'm, we're just going to pop on at some point. I'm just going to pop on with a live stream. I, I have no idea when it's going to be. But just kind of show you all there and what it's like and all that stuff. Um, but but yeah, so I'm going to be gone there. And then the day that I, then I fly back on Friday morning, the butt crack of dawn, I'm on the plane at seven o'clock in the morning because my, my nephew is having his bar mitzvah dinner that night. So I needed to be back in time for the bar mitzvah dinner. And then on Saturday is my nephew's bar mitzvah. And it is also Phoenix's 16th birthday. So that has been a freaking mess, but we've got it all sorted out and it's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. Um, but so, so basically there's no way I'm going to be able to do live chat or what's up in makeup or any content that week. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> it's just, it's just not going to happen except for things that I create 
um, if we do a live stream for uh, creators and friends, that's the only thing you're going to see that week. But then after that, everything's going back to normal uh, that following week. So our next live chat is going to be on the 14th of April, which is my mom's birthday. Oh, I just realized that. My mom's birthday is coming up too. All right, I'm going to go. Mad love to you. Have a wonderful couple of weeks. And yeah, I do plan on doing What's Up in Makeup this weekend. I do plan to plan to put up a Friday video this weekend. Just no, no live chat this week. All right, I'll let you go. Mad love. Have a great week. Bye.